it's hearing voices and sounds outside the room. It's all there. Uh, he, 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 there was this wonderful synergy between his life and the imaginative world he created uh, on stage. I wanted to ask about that. You know, at least through your book, uh, he hung in there very well with this unbelievable one-night stand life he had and his alcohol and the rest. And uh, I was amazed he made 71. I thought oh, surely I, he was... Uh, I think that's also very prescient. Uh, the, he, I think he made 71 because he swam for half an hour every day, no matter what. But, you know, there was a paper I read by some um, biochemist who studied Williams and his drug and drink in intake, and he referred to it, just she referred to it as the pharmacology of the lost. And I think that he, you know, it is amazing that he lived as long as he did. He should have been dead 15 years. He was trying, but you know, the reality is when he made a kind of Faustian bargain with himself, uh, because he started to drink and take so that he could work. And, and inevitably, if you start to drink and take drugs at that level, he, he, he did for a while. It did produce work. But the work was that it, it, he got over his block by describing his increased state of paralysis so that he, he essentially devoured himself artistically. He, his, he, he took himself, he ruined himself for his art. He destroyed himself for meaning. And that is predicted and actually expressed in Sweet Bird of Youth. At the end of the play, Chance Wayne uh, offered to leave with the princess to go to Hollywood, go back to Hollywood, where she's suddenly a success, says, no, he's going to stay and face certain death. And she says, but why? And he says, well, a, a life's got to mean something. In other words, he sacrifices himself for meaning. And at some point, you know, the vessel was dry. All right, we can't go on this way. I need to know how you rank uh, Tennessee Williams and what his art meant to uh, the theater. Well, I think I rank him as, you know, it's no good ranking him, but he's certainly in my pantheon, he is the, the greatest American playwright. But what he meant to American theater is really simple to say. He showed a way to, for, for the post-war playwrights, how to write both poetically and commercially. He, as Martha Miller said, he planted the, 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 the flag of beauty on American theater. And, with, and he showed how to, be, to write both internally and externally. There would not be Death of a Salesman without Glass Menagerie. There would not be Angels in America without Glass Menagerie. He, he's the sort of bedrock of all of the more uh, I want to say liberated, but he opened the theater up and, and liberated it from the naturalism of uh, the earlier uh, era uh, and really made it gorgeous. And in a larger sense, the best way of explaining it is if I ask you to think of a toothache and think of when you have a toothache, you can't think because pain stops thought. And what Williams's plays do is allow us somehow magically, by the lyricism and beauty of his words, to think about the pain of contemporary existence. And I think that's his genius. Well, uh, tell me, I know you live in London, do you have a website that... I have, you can, but there's a website for the biography and there's a website of all my New Yorker work and my life out on, the, on the web. What is John Lord. Lord. <laughs> com. Okay. Tennessee Williams Biography dot com. All right. Well, look, let me thank you for being on All the right. show, Pleasure. and good luck to you and 
uh, your future because uh, we know you have a great book here and what have you got coming next? Next is Joyride, a theatrical primer uh, coming out next year from Norton. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us tonight. This has been the Smoky Bacon and Dick Concannon Show. 